Hey everyone, it's Nick Marzinski. In my last post on the website at trappinglight.com, I mentioned an online black and white photography course over at Udemy that's taught by photographer David Nightingale. I talked about how great the class was and encouraged people to take it, but then towards the end of my post I dropped a bomb which was that the course is designed really for users of Photoshop, Creative Suite, or Creative Cloud, and that really leaves Element users out in the dark. Today I'm hoping to rectify that a little by showing you the gradient map adjustment layer, how it works, and how you can use it to create high contrast black and white images right within Elements. So let's get started. Now, when you generally hear the term gradient in photography, people think about things like gradient filters that you put on your camera or the gradient tool in Photoshop that shades from one color to another and that sort of thing. And that's not really precisely how the gradient map adjustment layer works. What the gradient map adjustment layer does is that it takes a gradient or a band of colors and it maps those colors onto an image based on the luminance values of that image. The darker the, the, the pixels in an image, the further to the left on the gradient that pixel will be mapped. Okay, And it sounds confusing, but here's an example that will hopefully clear it up. What I have here is a monochromatic image consisting of 11 bars ranging from all black with no detail right over here to all white with no detail over here on the right. To set up a gradient layer, you're going to need to click on the Add Adjustment Layer icon at the bottom of your Layers palette. If you don't have the Layers palette open in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, the way to get it is to go up here to Windows and come down to Layer and click on that. That will open up the Layers palette. At the bottom of the Layers palette, you've got this half moon icon right here. That's the Add Adjustment Layer icon. You click on that and you click on Gradient Map. When that happens, it's going to open up a properties panel, at least it does within Photoshop CS6. Within Elements, you'll have something where you can see a gradient, which looks like this right here. If you click on the gradient, it brings you into a gradient editor. And this gradient editor allows you to make changes to that gradient, which will have an effect on your image. Okay. Within this gradient editor, there's two stops that you can see right here on this gradient. There's one on the left hand side which sets what the gradient looks like on the left and one on the right hand side which sets what it looks like on the right and then it just simply shades from one side to the other. If I click on this left color stop and click on the color right below here this area, well if I click on this, this area down here opens up and then I can edit not only the location of the stop where it is along this bar, but also the color that that stop is. So I'm going to click on the color, double, single click on it, brings up the color picker, and let's select a nice shade of blue. How about something like that? If I do that and click OK, you can see exactly what it does to the image. The darker pixels, the black over here, is mapped to this side of the gradient, and the white over here is mapped to this other side of the gradient. Okay? Besides just being able to do something like set colors and set location, the other thing I can do is I can drag, click and drag these stops. So if I drag this stop over here, what you can see is that more and more of this image is getting blue. If you really think about it, this actually makes sense. What Photoshop is doing is it's looking at a pixel in the image and it's going, okay, how light is this pixel? Okay, it's this particular luminance value. Based off of that, I'm going to put it here on the gradient map. Okay, let's take a look at this pixel over here. Well, how light is this pixel? Well, it's this. Well, then I'm going to put it over here on the gradient map. By moving these color, this color stop over right here, what I'm simply saying is there's a larger portion of the luminance of this image that Photoshop should convert to blue. And that's what you see. If I drag it all the way over to the, to the right, everything is blue except for this final bar right here. I can also do the same thing over on the other side with the white. If I drag it to the left, more and more of that image is going to be mapped directly to white. And If I drag it as far as I can, only this final bar will be mapped to the blue. Besides the two stops, for every two stops that you've got in the gradient editor, you also have this color midpoint. Clicking in this and dragging this changes the way the gradient shades from one stop to the other. So if I click and drag to the left, it's going to shade to white or the lighter shades much faster than it will when it was at the center. Similarly, if I drag it to the to the uh, left, excuse me, if I drag it to the right, then it's going to be blue longer than it was if it was at the center of the image. 
So there's really a good degree of control that you have within this gradient editor to, to affect the way that your gradient works and how it is going to affect your image. I'm going to close out of this, click OK, and I'm going to close this down. And I'm going to go on to another example. In this case, it's the same exact image that we had before. It's the same 11 bars. I just simply flipped it 90 degrees um, so that it is now uh, in the portrait orientation rather than landscape. And I've already built a gradient for this image, so let's take a look at it. If I double click on the gradient right here, it's going to bring up the gradient map properties palette, and I can click in here, bring up the gradient editor, and you can see that basically what this is, is it's a rainbow with different color stops throughout the gradient. I've got everything from red on the extreme right to magenta on the extreme left. Now, the darker shades here, if you think about it, are probably going to be getting mapped to the magenta, to the blue, and to the cyan, while the lighter shades of the image are going to be mapped to the reds, the yellows, and the greens. Okay. On the layers palette, I've masked, I've put a layer mask on here, and I've masked out the gradient map on the right side of the image. So you're only going to see it on the left side. The right side is going to remain black and white monochromatic. So I'm going to activate the layer and this is what you get. This shouldn't really not be a surprise because like I, with the prior example, the darker shades in the image are getting mapped to the left side of the gradient while the lighter shades are getting mapped to the right side of the gradient. Okay, and this is all and well and good for these sorts of examples that I'm bringing up, but it's kind of abstract. So let's actually look at a real life example and see how the gradient editor, gradient map adjustment layer, excuse me, can work. This is an image that I shot last weekend at Devil's Lake State Park in central Wisconsin, and let's say that I want to convert it to black and white. Now, if I want to do that with a gradient map editor, it's actually a gradient map layer. It's actually pretty simple. I just click on the add adjustment layer, click on gradient map. Within the gradient map, I click on the, the gradient right there into the editor, and I'm going to select this preset right up here that is black white. And what you can see right off the bat is that it converts this image to a very high contrast black and white. What it's doing, as we talked about, is that it's evaluating the brightness details in the image. It's saying, for example, oh, this tree trunk right here is pretty dark, so it's going to get mapped over here. On the other hand, the sky is pretty light, so it's going to get mapped over here. But the only colors that it can use to map this, the, the luminance values of this image are black and white. And so what you get is you get a very high contrast black and white because it's mapping from an extreme black over here right to an extreme white, particularly if you've got image data across the entire histogram of your image. And in this case, for this image, right here, if I click out of that and then disable this, you can see that the histogram stretches pretty much from the the black points down here all the way over to the white. Now, this seems like a pretty good idea just doing this and then simply using this color midpoint right here to affect how it shades. Let's, let's get rid of you. Using the color midpoint to affect how it shades from black to white, but we can actually do better than that. If I click under the gradient, I can add another stop pretty much wherever I want. I'm going to do that. I'm going to click a, put a stop right here, and when I do that, it opens up this stop, this editor here where I can set the location. I'm going to set the location of the stop to 25 percent, and bring that up again click in the stop and I can also set the color so it's at the location of 25 percent I'm gonna click in the color to bring up the color picker in here on this hue I'm gonna set it to zero the saturation I'm gonna leave at zero and I'm gonna set the brightness to the same value that I have for the location 25 percent then I'm gonna do the same thing in the middle of the image I'm gonna set another set up another color stop I'm gonna set the location to 50 percent in the color picker, I'm going to make sure that my hue and saturation are set to zero and my brightness is set to 50%. And I'll do it one more time over on the right hand side of the image with my location at 75% and my brightness value at 75% as well. So what I've done is I've added several more 
color stops to my image and that gives me more control over the brightness levels within individual parts of my image. Now instead of simply having a black point, a white point, and a mid-tone point that I can go and, and, and work with, instead now I really have one, two, three, four, five points as well as the midpoints between them. So if I want to really make the image seem darker, all I have to do is to go on to some of these darker stops right here and then simply drag them over to the right to affect more of the image. And that will effectively darken the image. In the same way, if I want to brighten this image, all I have to do is simply drag all of the stops, or as many of the stops as I want, over to the left, and that will brighten the image. So it really gives me a much more, oh, what would the right word be? Uh, targeted way to make changes to my brightness in my image. And when you're working in black and white, that's very important because when you strip all of the color data out of a black and white, really all you're left with is contrast. And so to be able to make very, very particular edits to contrast is, is a way of making sure that your black and white image has the maximum impact because you can affect contrast at a very minute level. So that's where I'm going to end it today. Again, as I said at the beginning, there's really a lot that the gradient map adjustment layer can do. We've really only scratched the surface of it. And in future tutorials that are coming later this week and into next week, I'm going to go through additional things that this gradient editor can do, as well as a few other adjustment layers that you can use within Photoshop, within Photoshop Elements, to be able to create compelling black and whites. So, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope to see you as we continue with future tutorials. Again, my name is Nick Marzinski at trappinglight.com. Thank you.